Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm gonna show you yet another build of mine. This time it's gonna be my latest build. It is the Obsidian Tremor Pyromancer. It is way stronger than I expected at the first time I theory crafted this character. Uh, mostly also because of the Shadow Realm set. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, let's dive into the game here. So here we are inside the bug in the game. And before I'm gonna talk about skill allocation, as always, um, I'm gonna show you this weapon first. So this build is all about the Obsidian Juggernaut, in this case the mythical version. And it's a level 84 weapon and it has a skill, which is like a spam of a skill, that is called Obsidian Tremor, and this is the main ability of this build in this case. So. Keep that in mind, that we have our main ability already, like this. Let's start up with the skill allocation. So since we have our main ability already, we like all the skills we take from classes are mostly like buffs, debuffs, etc. Right? So we are a demo and Octultus, so a Paramancer. Um, so for the demo part, we have Flame Touch maxed out, like both of these. Flame Touch and Temper, the reason is mostly because, well, we don't have a main ability, right? So we have a little bit more points to spend for these passives. And the second point, or like the second reason, is also why um that my offensive ability and defensive ability is kind of low. So these give me OA and DA, and it's pretty good for me. Um, also, we convert like some of the physical damage to chaos, like 54%, and we convert like some of the fire to chaos as well. That's pretty good. Um, Blast Shield, like our defensive proc, or like defensive uh, circuit breaker basically, um, 14 out of 12, give us like plus 6% max address and also a decent amount of resorption, 990 in this case, that's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> Blackwater Cocktail, this is only 2 points right now, like 7 out of 12, um, I might actually take this up to a soft cap, but right now it's just there. Basically, as a one pointer, then this high potency and agonizing flame. So, this line is there to, well, have flat resistance reduction for this build, also to reduce enemy physical damage and to reduce enemy OA. Then we have the flashbang, which is 250 flat defensive ability debuff. That is uh, quite a lot. Pretty good. And also, we have searing light at 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 is like the, the sweet spot here. Um, because you get like 29% or 6 points, like 29% fumble at impaired aim, and after that you will only get like plus 1% more fumble and impaired aim, and that's like kinda not worth it. Then also we have Vindictive Flame at 14 out of 16 now actually. <clears throat> now for a long time Vindictive Flame was only always good at like 11 out of 16, and 11 out of 16 is still a sweet spot, but now they've buffed like Vindictive Flame's um, points after 11 out of 16 a little bit, so 14 out of 16 is actually also a sweet spot. So if you have like 3 more points to spare, feel free to take Vindictive Flame to 14 out of 16 now instead of 11 out of 16 only. So yeah, uh, in this case, like I said, like we have quite some points available to choose like buffs like this one. So yeah, 14 out of 16 for this build. Uh, 1 point in Ulzin's Wrath, um, you don't have to take this, you can also like take it out completely, but... <clears throat> I think it's fine as a one pointer. Um, Thermite Mine, well, this is just a one pointer. We don't care about elemental resistance reduction. Since we are a Chaos build, we max out Hellfire Mine here. So, yeah. 92 out of 12 Hellfire Mine actually yields us minus 50% Chaos resistance reduction. That is quite a lot. Um, especially since, like, usually Chaos builds have a problem with resistance reduction, right? This provides us very, very important resistance reduction. And also has some flat chaos damage on top, right? Um, the reason why I have this on 22 out of 12 is actually just because I was lucky on the craft on my Corex Deception Relic here. As you can see, the completion bonus gives me plus one Hellfire Mine. If I did not get that, then this would be a 21 out of 12, which is also fine. But yeah, 22 out of 12 is obviously a little bit lucky. Then about the Yorkshire test, um, a lot of things here. We have Curse of Frailty as a 1-pointer and Vulner Vulnerability as a 1-pointer. These are just 1-pointers because the Obsidian Tremor gives us 15% Chaos Resistance Reduction. 
to Curse of Frailty, so this is basically 15% Chaos Resistance reduction, and also, well, movement speed reduction, we don't really care about the physical and bleed. Um, the vulnerability is like 1.4 minus 45 DA, which is fine as well in my opinion. But yeah, it's definitely not worth it to put more points than 1 in these. Um, Rev Dreek, as with every Octal Test, you always use this. Right, so, yeah, bunch of flat uh, acid damage, which we don't really convert, so that's kinda not that good. But we get flat OA and a nice heal, so that's still good enough. And also HP regen, actually. Aspect of the Guardian, super good spell, um, super good buff. You should always use this, at least at a soft cap, like 12 out of 12 gives you 12% physical resistance, right? And now they also buff the overcap points a little bit, so like you get 1% more physical for every 2 points that you point put here. And this is especially good for acid and vitality builds, because you also get like, um, bonus percent acid and vitality damage, right? Um, Usually on a Chaos build I would only put this as a soft cap and not overcap this. But since, as I said, like we have quite some points to spare, right? So we can put this to 16 out of 12 actually here. And get like 2% more Fizz Rest, that's fine. So let's switch build is for the flat Chaos damage. Do note that the attack speed doesn't really give me anything. Because uh, this skill here scales with uh, casting speed and doesn't scale with um, attack speed, so it's kind of like force wave. Um, <clears throat> we have 3 points and consecrate the blade to convert an additional 50% physical to chaos. Uh, because of that we actually don't have only 54%, we have 69% physical to chaos, which helps us convert the flat damage from temper, and also can helps us convert the flat damage of the skill Obsidian Tremor. And then we have 12, 12 out of 12 second right for the vitality resistance and the percent chaos damage. We don't really convert the vitality to chaos as far as I know, so that's well, too bad, but well, would be great if you had like more conversion for like vitality and acid to chaos as well, actually. But yeah, you can't have everything in every build. <clears throat> now this is possession or exclusive, obviously, as the pyromancer doesn't have any other ex ex exclusive to choose from, so... <clears throat> we have 19% absorption here, ton of flat damage, like ton of flat chaos damage as well, and like a 203% chaos damage, also 34 chaos resistance, and the 100% disruption protection, which is pretty nice. Now, onto the devotions. So, since I'm using the Shadow Ram set, um, which makes me really tanky. This actually allows me to go like super offensive and devotions, even on hardcore. So we have, as you can see, the Abominable Might from the Abomination, tier 3, and also Dying God, so we are like super offensive on this one. <clears throat> now this one needs 15 blue, 8 red, and this one needs uh, 18 greens and 8 red. So we need like red, green, blue, obviously. Um, since you're a Chaos build, Solar's Witchfire is also a, um, like Solar's Witchblade actually. The Eldritch Fire proc is a must have as well, because this one has 35% Chaos Resistance Reduction. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a must have. Um, the Revenant would be a pretty nice proc, or like a pretty nice de devotion overall actually, but the thing is, like, we don't really need it, right? I mean, this one has 6% uh, Lifesteal and 6% Casting Speed, which is pretty nice. But we have like flat resistance reduction from agonizing flames anyway, so it's not like a must have, right? Um, what I think is a must have though is like another defensive proc. It was like, or, like another circuit breaker ghoul is like super good for anything that has weapon damage, right? And since we're a pyromancer, like pyromancer is not known to be the tankiest class ever, right? It's rather squishy overall, so we need to, even though we go like for offensive. Double tier 3 offensive devotions. Um, try to still get like everything that makes us as tanky as possible. Even though we already have the Shattered Run set. And then also we have the spider, the new spider. Uh, pretty good. Like uh, new bonuses are way better than the old one. Like you have a bunch of OA and DA on this one now. And also attack speed, which well, we don't care, but we have also casting speed here, so that's good. Um, yeah, Scholar Slide and Hawk. Like Scholar Slide is mainly there just to get like affinity. Hawk is there for affinity and crit and offensive ability. Then we have the Kraken. <clears throat> Since we're using a two-hander, 
Rakan is kind of a must-have as well, at least if you're using casting or attack speed. Like, if you're a cooldown-based character, then you don't really need this, but if you're based on attack speed and casting speed, then this is super good. Um, yeah, then Hound and Eel, they're mostly there just for affinity. I would like to have Satyr's Guide, obviously, over one of these, but I'm kind of missing the one point here. Like, I would, sac I would need to sacrifice this point from Dying God, for example. Which gives you a lot of kills, like flat chaos damage. Um, that's kind of a no-go. And then the Watcher, since this is hardcore and since you need 15 blue for Dying God anyways, you might as well pick up the Watcher, right? This one has like, as always, insane pierce resistance, armor, defensive ability, physique, defensive ability. It's just, it's like the best tier 2 devotion in the game. like. You should always try to get it if you need like blue affinity anyways for your tier 3s. <clears throat> oh yeah, also we have the Fiend here. Like Fiend is not in the greatest spot right now. You can also choose to get like to use Bat instead of Fiend. Um but I think for this build Fiend is actually okay because you get like more chaos damage here, also chaos resistance. And like the proc which deals chaos damage as well. Kind of fits the build. Um <clears throat> And also we don't convert Pierce or Vitality to Chaos, so this proc is only about the main hand damage. Um, so in this case actually, I can see Fiend being maybe better than Bat. And I took it for the theme anyways. But yeah, feel free to choose Bat over Fiend, even though this like fits better. Because like honestly, like Bat is such a good tier 1 devotion, like it's probably the best tier 1 devotion in the game. You should probably choose better or fiend, but it's like a hard call here. Might have to like test the build a little bit more and try bad instead of fiend. Anyway, let's also move on to the gear. So the gear is well, Zidane Juggernaut and Shadow Ram Sat. That's like my end game gear for this character. Um do note that there are like other ways to play this character, like you don't need full Shadow, Shadow Realm set first. I'm gonna like show you at least two other Grim tools um, that are like way easier to do for starters as well. Because I think actually this type of class, or like this type of build, is rather beginner friendly overall. Like you just need this weapon. Everything else is like um, not mandatory, like, the weapon is mandatory, yes, but everything else can be built, like, um, like, continuously, right, so you, act, you, you can start off on, like, easier content and have, like, I don't know, just faction gear, then you can do, like, a little bit harder content and use, for example, the Razen set, like, once you find Razen's full set, then you use the Razen set, and then once you're, like, able to clear SR60, you get the Shadow Realm set. So, there's like a gradual process when it comes to the gear in this build, and only the weapon being mandatory. So it's, I wouldn't say like it's super beginner friendly, but it's not that hard to build or like to to build it up. But yeah, anyways, you have like four pieces shadow ram sets, so like one, two, three, four pieces here. And also note that all of my Shadow Realm pieces have 5% physical resistance, at least like these, these three. <clears throat> the, the amulet obviously doesn't have a physical resistance. So we have like 15% Fizz Rest just because of this SR set. Um, reason why I have this is because like every time you farm SR, you should always only buy those that have 5% Fizz Rest in the first place. And then once you have like a bunch of them, you can like Use those that have like, I don't know, like highest HP, highest OA, highest whichever resistance you need on your character. So yeah, you can like start choosing the good stuff here in the SR set. Like you need you can't be that picky with the helm, obviously, because this one only drops in SR60. But the other three pieces are rather easy to get, right? And you can be very picky about these. So you will have like it's it's gonna be like easier. To get like super high rolled versions of these compared to other items. Anyways, for the boots, we have the Chosses of Barros. This is actually a very bad one because I don't have that many left. Because this is just such a good pair of pants that you want to use on so many builds that I'm kind of running low on them already. And now I am using like one that has only 104 OA, which is super low as you can see. 
At least it has 4% physical resistance, but yeah, offensive ability could definitely be, be better on this one. Um, but yeah, let's use those for the proc and like offensive ability, phys res, chaos res. That's super good pair of talents for any like default attacker or like <clears throat> spell spammer like this one. Um, but is Jurazin's Waste Guard. It's mainly there for plus one actual test and like. Bonus damage to Chthonics and offensive ability, and also some resistances. Like it's just decent overall, and there are like no, re no there are not really any better um, alternatives for Chaos Octopus here. Um, like Chaos Demos don't really have anything better as, as well. So yeah, this is just it's not super amazing, but I think it's like the best you can take here. Um, for rings, we have the Void Heart. Obviously you want like high casting speed and high conversion rolls on these, because we do have a lot of fire for that. But this one has 30% conversion, which is I believe the max actually. 116 flat chaos and uh, 32 OA, 4% casting speed, so it's overall a really really good one. It also helps me like get points of possession and uh, also has a resistance reduction proc, like 10% chaos RR as you can see. It's like a must. Kind of a must have for like a best in slot uh, end game setup at least. Combustion Band as well gives us uh, casting speed and chaos res resistance reduction, so you want like high chaos percent damage on this, uh, high casting speed, high HP, high DA, stuff like that, you know. Um, I chose Void Rent Talents here over Void Steel Gauntlets. You can also go for Void Steel Gauntlets to have more casting speed than this one. But uh, this one also has 8th resistance, and we're actually kinda lowish. Like, without this, we wouldn't be able to overcap it to 27. As you can see, and the uh, White Steel Gauntlets give me worse resistances than this. So, resistances was like the main reason why I chose uh, Void Rand Talents over the White Steel Gauntlets. And also, casting speed is not really a problem, at least for me. You're still. Um, at 189% as you can see, and once like either Bat the Cry or Prismatic Diamond or Dying God. I mean Dying God will be like up almost all the time anyways, right? And then we're like at 199% and then with Bat the Cry like o over 200% or like 200% is max obviously, but if you get slowed you will not be slowed that much, right? <clears throat> if you have overcapped the casting speed. So yeah, I believe this is fine, like Try to still get like as high casting speed and as high eighth resistance as you can on this one. Also like high flat chaos and percent chaos is also okay. Um, actually I'm using Time Warp Walkers here. I've never used these ever before, but they have 5% physical resistance now. Or like up to 5% I believe. Also slow resistance, which is pretty good. And plus 2 Hellfire Mine, which, uh, well... Helps me cap out Hellfire Mine. And also, fla uh, like, percent chaos as well. So these are actually... Even though they're not considered rather bad or all, they are kind of perfect for this build, in my opinion. So, yeah. I'm using Time Warped Walkers here, actually. Um, I think we've covered everything except for Metal and Redic, right? So the, for the Redic, I chose Kovacs Deception. Reason being is... Um, Build has kind of low offensive and defensive ability, and this one gives us of like percent OA and percent DA. And while I got lucky with the completion bonus, I kind of got unlucky with the DA and o OA roll, right? Like three percent would be average for both of them, so you can have like an insane roll with like four percent OA and four percent DA. I got three percent and two percent here, which is at least, at least uh, below average, right? So that's kind of unlucky, but that's still fine. I can't complain about completion bonus, right? So. Using Corex Deception here, be good. And then for the metal, I'm actually using the Mythical Black Star of Deceit. Um, I know quite some people love this metal because of the flat resistance reduction on the proc. But keep in mind that we have Blackwater Cocktail already, so the proc is actually kind of useless for us. I mean, it is some chaos damage, but that's it, right? It's other than that, it's useless. But it still has like a bunch of like a a huge amount of vitality and chaos resistance, and also 6% love steal, and also gives us plus 3 witch blade, uh, I mean solar as witch fire, and plus 2 second rides. 
And that's kind of hard to beat overall, actually. Like, you can't use, like, a defensive metal, like, um... Mark of Undying, right? Or, uh... The, um... Ozunin's one. Hold the gun. Yeah, obviously it's called the Mark of Divinity, right? You can use Mark of the Undying or Mark of Divinity instead of this as well. Or, like, I don't know, maybe there are some other choices that I have uh, not checked out yet. But yeah, until then, I think that's actually pretty nice. Like, it fits my resistances that I need and um, helps me cap out those, as you can see. It's, it's not a bad metal at all. Like, it's pretty good. Anyways, I'm gonna show you... Um, like two more Grim tools for this character that are like a little bit easier to make. And after that I'm gonna show you the build in action. So stay tuned. Okay, so I prepared two easier to make versions of this build. So if you have like a pretty large uh, collection of legendaries, but you don't have a character that can do Shattered Ram Shard 60, and thus you don't have the full Shattered Ram slot, you can do something like this, right? I will put the link to this uh, description as well. This uses full Razen set, which basically means that we will have more Chaos Resistance Reduction from the Curse of Frailty here. This will have you, give you minus 40% instead of minus 15%. And thus, this should actually be a little bit more damage than the Shadow Ram version. But it's gonna be um, probably a lot squishier. And because of that, I think it's like... Pretty good for everything up to the the, 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 um, the roguelike dungeons probably, but um, it's not gonna be as consistent, or maybe it's not even able to do like high SR and like crucible stuff, right? Um, which the Shadow Realm version was able to do, like. I know the second version is really aimed for like players who have no gear whatsoever except for this hammer. Like, say you are leveling like, like a pyromancer, and you have nothing, right, except for this hammer. Like, this, like, just like a random hammer that dropped for you, and, I don't know, like the first legendary you ever got, and that is this hammer. And say you're running a pyromancer. So you can still make the build work. I mean, you are gonna see that OA and DA is gonna be worse than with my preferred setup. Um, that said, the build will work for, like... I don't know, main campaign content, maybe even some dungeons. Um, and this is like all super easy to find gear, right? The Fatten Mask is like a fixed spawn in a fixed location, right? You can just find this easily in Act 7. Um, these are like blue rings that are either from like... Um, these are actually not vendor items, but I mean blue rings are like so easy to get in general, right? Um, if you don't have these rings, you can get some other that just fix your resistances, right? These are just an example here. Um, this one, for example, is also just a blue amulet here. It's also rather easy to find, like compared to legendaries at least. Um, this is a faction compo like faction gear. This is just super easy to go uh, to get, right? You just go to the shop and buy it. Uh, same thing for this one. Um, this one is just a blue pair of gloves. It's also like super easy to find. This metal is also blue, right? So I didn't change it around. Then you have these green amis here. I didn't put any affixes, so any affix that you will get for these will be good enough, right? Like, you can choose anything, like any affix, and it's gonna be, like, good enough for this. So, for example, this one is just there to give you plus one uh, all skills to actual test and then chaos resistance, right? It does convert some of your fire damage to vitality, which is not really what you want, because you rather would like to convert it to chaos, but if you have, like, only this gear, you're not gonna convert more than... 50% chaos to, like, fire to chaos anyway. I don't think you have, like, any conversion here. So, I mean, okay, there's, like, 30% from the bot song vestments, but that's about it, I believe. Um, so, yeah. And if you have, like, insane FXs, then this is, like, good for quite some time, probably, until you find your legendary belt, the Razin's belt. Also, it's, like, Gleggard's also, like, super easy to farm, like, uh, the second boss from the Hidden Path, right? Like, you can include this boss every time you want to go to Steps of Torment. Really easy to farm. Um, Bloodstorm Vestments, even easier to farm, like just kill some Chthonian cultists, I mean some, yeah, like some cultists from the Chthonian guys. 
um, for example, in Blood Grove, just farm some Blood Grove or like do um, Carol's runs, for example. Again, I didn't put any FX here, so any FX that you get will be a bonus on top. So yeah, it, it works without any FXs here and some like easy to get blue items. This is like a this is super easy to get. And these are okay, I get I guess like rings and amulet and gloves and metal are like the hardest to get. But I mean feel free to use anything else that kinda of fixes your resistances, like it doesn't really matter that much because like your damage will still be there. Also like more HP would be nice, so maybe you got like a should probably go for like a goddess ring, maybe, like farm goddess and X3, you know, the a goblin. Um, that way you can get more HP, for example. And yeah, as you can see, like the skill points didn't really suffer too much from the bad gear here. It's only gonna be like mighty players and like tankiness that's gonna be a little bit worse. Yeah, like 11.3k HP instead of like 14k that I have on my setup. And also, casting speed is also like not that much worse, right? It's 182 instead of 189. Um, Lifesteal is like. 15%, like it's even 2% more than on my usual setup. You can get like 4% roll on this for life state, for example. Um, Relic is just a configuration now. Um, you should craft this and use this as soon as you can. Because you will also, like this one gives you plus one demo, right? It doesn't give me any chaos damage, but that's not too important. The skill is like useless anyways. Um, but you need this to craft Kovax in the end, right? Like, this is a component that you will need for crafting um, Desolation. You need Desolation for Ulzuin's Pyroclasm, and then you need Ulzuin's Pyroclasm to craft Kovax Deception, right? So this will not be wasted. Um, so it's always okay to craft this if you go for this Parent Mancer setup here. Um, obviously, like, overcaps are not that good. As you can see, like, things are barely capped, but with a setup like this, you're not gonna, like, dive into the hardest endgame content anyways, it's just gonna be for like main campaign stuff, uh, maybe easy dungeons like Steps of Torment, maybe get, I don't know, like Bastion of Chaos is kinda chaos resistant, so maybe that's not even that good of an idea. But for like Steps of Torment farming, um, Hidden Path farming, that kind of stuff, this setup is definitely good enough. Alright, so there are a couple of things that I didn't mention yet. Number one is, I'm using the Rune of the Dark Progenitor right now. Um, this is a leap that is very, very non-meta, because leaps have, like, very long animation. That said, this cooldown of this is kinda low. And this also has, like, 1 meter more range than the rune of uh, displacement, right? Which is, like, the most commonly used meta rune. Um, and also, this one has, re like, flat reduction to OA and DA. Which does not stack with Flashbang and um, Black Rock the Cocktail. That said, this one is like 170 flat OA reduction, this one is only 84, and this one is 250 DA reduction. So, yeah, the DA reduction is useless on this, but the OA reduction is pretty good. Um, that said, another reason why I'm using this is because of it's flat chaos damage, like, this has a shit ton of chaos damage, actually, and also, like, huge main hand damage. Check out my highest crit on this character, it's, like, 914k. That is actually not from Obsidian Tremor or, like, anything else, it's from this jump. So this jump crit for, like, 914k, which is pretty good, man. Um, yeah, but that said, Feel free to use something else, like, this is definitely not the best that you can go here, probably. Um, something that either reduced all resistance, like, all damage would be better. Or something... Like, Rune of Displacement, maybe, that is just, like, you know, instant. Like, better defensively is also better. I mean, that said, I like this Rune Augment very much for main campaign, dungeons, and, like, lower SR shards. But I can see like Rune of Displacements being better for higher SR shards and for maybe Crucible 150 to 170 as well. Um, also, I forgot to mention that I also have the Symbol of Solile here. This also gives me Chaos Resistance Reduction and also 10%, like 10% additional physical to Chaos Conversion. So we don't have 69%, um, which would have been the best number. 
but we actually have 79% physical to chaos conversion. Which is, again, pretty nice for our Obsidian Tremor here and our Temper as well, so. Okay, okay. Um, that said, feel free to use either a Seal of Blades or Seal of Might instead of Symbol of Solile, actually. Like, uh, if you want to go more defensively, um, put Deuce out on the conversion on the Solaris Flame proc, which... Like, I kind of wanted to make the change towards the Seal, Seal of Might, for example, to bump my physical resistance from 42 to 47, actually, which would mean, like, I would take, like, 8.7 or 8.6% less damage from physical hits, actually, than I do now. Um, and also Seal of Blades would give me like 5% more life steal, right? But 13% is already kinda okay. Um, the main reason would be probably to help me overcap Bleed and Pierce a little bit more, but you don't really need to overcap Bleed that much and Pierce is like... Yeah, like higher than 11% would be good, but... The thing is... What made me not swap this out yet is not only does it give me chaos resistance reduction on a skill, that's like kind of annoying though. Like the skill, I don't really like casting the skill that much because it kind of messes with your flow of like smashing things, right? Um, but it also has flat chaos, which is nice, and also 10% conversion as well, which helps me a lot with the temper and Zinion and Tremor skill itself. Let's go for a dummy kill here. Nineteen seconds, eighteen seconds, maybe. That's pretty good, right? All right, so this should usually be the part of the video where I start going to the ancient grove, right? Um, but since I've done that on like almost every character, and also on this character, obviously, and also since I have this quest here still on this character, I'm gonna show you some pod library this time instead. Alright, so welcome to Port Vedbury. Um I know a lot of you guys don't like this area. Um, I also used to call it Port Legbury for like the longest time. But ever since the latest uh, performance update, it's actually okay to run this area. Like, it doesn't really lag that much anymore. Um, but it can still be very annoying, right? There's tons of Aether Ground. There are like Aether Storms following you around. Like, this one just spawned on my head. You can see here, this guy is like gonna s follow me or something, I don't know. Super annoying, right? You can't kill this stuff. But other than that, Pod Verbi doesn't like. It's not that bad. And also, the belts of the three Watchers, they got buffed. So, like, the three MIs that you are like important in this area, they're actually pretty okay now. Um, I mean, some of them are better, some of them are worse, obviously, but. They're rather interesting now. Uh, like how to move around this area, right? Um, there's a one thing that over here that you should always check, right? There's like a chest spawn inside an area over here. That's like your first target that you should go. So let's walk over there. And here we are. Oh, there is a chest spawn. It's like a 50-50 whether, whether or not the chest is here. And whenever the chest is not here, then it will spawn in another part in the second part of uh, Hot Vibri. Like in the second uh, stage. I don't know, what do you call it? Second floor. I mean, it's not really a floor, right? Because it's like a town. Like the second quarter. Also, yeah, as I mentioned, there are like three watchers you want to kill. Like the first watcher is always over here. So let's go and cut it. There it is. The Watcher Ordas. Now these guys have MI belts. 
Chains of Loras for this one. So, let's check it out. This one gives you like plus one demono and aether to fire conversion. So yeah, if you're playing like a demo and you don't have a good demo belt yet, just uh, maybe go into Bud Vabry once, like maybe do it on Elite for example. You can even do it while leveling in Elite for example or in normal. And get like a plus one, like a nice plus one belt for demo. Here in Pod Vabry. I mean the Aether to Fire conversion is not gonna be the best for you, right? It's it's gonna help you a bit if you're like a sorcerer or a defiler, I guess. But like plus one to all skills on a belt is always like kinda good. And you might get lucky with your pre and suffixes, right? Like this one is what? Insulating of protection. That's not the best, obviously. That's kinda bad. But you can get like insane stuff, right? Stone Head of Kings, you know? Then your next checkpoint is gonna be the Flames of Valbury, right? This is like like a typical death room, right? Like the one in SOT or Aging Grove. And just make sure to not stand inside the Aether Geysers. And also in places like this I like to hide the items because loot can be sometimes a little bit too cluttering for your screen, right? So this is like way more comfortable to disable loot first and then enable it once you've killed everything. I like to do that for like literally every death room in this game. Now there's another boss that I kinda... I mean I would call him the Ilgore of what Pod Valbury, right? You know Ilgore from Steps of Torment, the boss with no MI and he's like... Kinda, like you have to walk a weird way to get to him and he's super useless in the end, right? This guy is kinda similar. This guy does have an MI. But to be fair, it's like... It's so bad. I don't... I, like, I have no idea which build should use that MI. That said, I'm gonna show you the, show you the boss after all. Nevertheless. Jaren the Plague Warp Day. Eh? Smack him like it's good. Yeah, did he even drop his MI? He didn't, right? He got like an axe he can drop, but yeah, as I said, it's pretty bad. Probably should buff it. Alright, welcome to the second quarter of Pod Valbury. In this one we're gonna kill two more Watchers. Uh, the Archivist dead on, which you can only kill if you have the Anasteria quest. But once you've done that quest once, um, you can kill him over and over again whenever you go here. It's like a ad nice additional boss to this dungeon. So yeah, here we go, Watcher number one. Where is he? There he is. Grad. Alright. This one has a belt as well. But I didn't get it this time. Ever lucky. It's like a plus one something, some class as well. Uh, it's pretty good. This is actually the room where the chest will spawn when it didn't spawn in the first place, right? In the, the other small chest in the first area. Then you can also check out this vendor here. Like every dungeon has a vendor, right? And this vendor is pretty good for checking Aether Ray offhands. The ones that drop from the abomination. I mean amalgamation actually, whoops. Um, and usually he should spawn in here, but sometimes he like bugs out and spawns outside here. That said, you can still click on him and then check out his uh, components. Like you can buy a frozen heart and better shell sometimes, and then you check out 
armor and then off hands will be under armor which makes like absolute fucking no sense but whatever and then you check out these um pulsing shards here and i mean you would ideally want to have casting speed um whatever damage type you're going for so like aether or lightning or fire right or maybe even chaos um no for chaos you have like black flame side which has an offhand right but yeah so you would like to have like bonus Aether, fire, or lightning damage, or cold if you want to play cold, but cold is kind of bad, right? And then you have like, you're searching for bonus physical resistance or bonus casting speed. So these two are obviously trash, so we're gonna skip them. Also, if you're playing like a, uh, like a Sunjax character, you can also check out Overseer's Eyes over here. And um, I believe the rest of these are like, I mean, they're okay if you're like, I don't know, like uh, starting out, right? And you just want to like have an upgrade, maybe f for your armor. But for end game, these are not really worth checking, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, same good thing goes for this one. Anyways, let's move on here to our next target, which is either the Watcher or the Arcanist. There is actually the Arcanist, uh, Ar Archivist, actually, not Arcanist. He gives you the head if you have this quest, and he's like a nice optional boss that you can kill every now and then. Alright, Watcher number 3 comes over here, Brandis. This guy also has a plus one all skills to a specific mastery belt. In this case, it is Shaman, and it's like vitality to lightning conversion as well. But this one is actually pretty good for like lightning shamans. I mean, that said, there's like another belt that converts like aether to lightning, right? And it's also pretty good for shamans. But if you have like a bunch of flat vitality damage, maybe on the build you're playing, this might be better. And also, if you like, don't have any legendaries, then these belts are like super good now. Actually, like I really like those belts now for new players. So after killing the third watcher, you kind of just want to make your way to the throne of Fallen Eldritch as soon as possible, like as fast as possible. There's nothing of interest, and then you what? Well, you kill the overlord Fallen Eldritch and his uh, two bodies. As you can see, I have my resistances over maxed enough, so that whenever they reduce my resistances, I will still not take too much damage. And yeah, like the, the only circuit breaker that procced here was Blast Sheet, right? Like twice, I believe. But like even with that procs, I still have my Prismatic Rage from the Diamond. I have the Shatter Guard from the Shatter Ram set. And also at 45% HP, I will have the ghoul proc as well. So we have like four circuit breakers on this board actually. So just because one is down doesn't mean I have to run. Alright, for those of you that ask like how fast can I kill Gargobar on this character? Well, there you go. Just face tank, like you have enough defensive procs, you don't have to worry about anything. If your ha like, ha HP is gonna wobble around, just keep on attacking, and you're just gonna smack him to death like super quickly actually. 
Alright, so you know this part, right? Sanctum of the Chosen. So, whenever you enter this area, do check your freeze resistance, right? Mine is 64, which I believe is like just about good enough. But if you have like below 60%, you should definitely use a whole frost ointment, right? So, make sure to have some of those in your inventory if you have like lowish freeze resistance. Because you don't want to die to like stupid stuff like these traps, right? No, so like try to make sure to run as fast as possible from like Aterian to Aterian here. So that the freezing traps don't catch up. If you wanna kill the last Aterian, he's like over here, if you want to really farm Dark One set, don't forget to kill him as well. Alright, about Lokar, I mean, as always, since this is hardcore, we're gonna use the Royal Jelly stuff. Just to like make it a little bit easier, and I mean this stuff is like super easy to craft, right? Like it's super inexpensive. There we go. There's just like one really annoying thing, right? You see these stairs here? Those are like the biggest enemy of this build. Like, look at my projectiles. They're not gonna go up the stairs. That's kind of stupid, right? So, whenever you fight Lokar, try to not make him stand here, right? Like, once you make him spawn, you should probably like walk up a little bit further back. And don't like face tank him like I just did. Like, walk, walk a bit back and then start attacking him. So that he like runs over here. Here you can like fight him easy like much easier than I did over here. Sometimes you might get unlucky and he's like moving a bit to the back and then you're not gonna hit him anymore, so keep in mind that stairs are like the worst nemesis of this build actually. Alright, so I hope you guys liked this video about my obsidian tremor pyromancer. Um, also check out my crucible Wave 1 to 170 video of this character. Or like, I mean, you can also like just check out the 150 to 170 part of this video. Um, of the Crucible video, actually. And also, there's also Shaded Ram 50 to 51 so far. And maybe I'm gonna do higher SR shards as well in the future. Um, so, yeah. I mean, thank you very much for watching. And feel free to like, dislike, comment subscribe under this video as you like every kind of feedback is appreciated also feel free to check out my other build highlight videos and check out my twitch channel if you would like and yeah i hope i see you guys on the next one take care and goodbye